The 9800 XGD launched with rave reviews. Were they right or was it just hype? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on the two top AMD gaming CPUs with the newly released Ryzen 7 9800 X3D in the red corner, taking on the current king of gaming chips, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the blue corner. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 17 games, I will also show you how to select the best memory and motherboard for your new CPU. And if you stick around, I'll share with you my pro tips for how to unleash the performance locked inside the 9800X3D, something you will definitely not want to miss. It's really not rocket science, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into how to select the best components to extract the most out of your new 9800X3D. A question I see a lot on CPU reviews is what is the best memory and motherboard to buy? For the 9800X 3D, which is compatible with AMD Socket AM5, there are a wide range of motherboard and memory options to choose from, and therefore it can be overwhelming to make the best choice. So let's briefly dig into what you need to know to make the right choice. To select the right motherboard, you first need to understand what it does. The primary function of a motherboard is to connect all of the components in your PC together so that they can communicate with each other. It's the foundation that connects all of your hardware to your processor, distributes electricity from your power supply, and defines the types of storage devices, memory modules, and graphics cards that can connect to your PC. Your CPU will determine how fast and efficient the flow of information is, but the motherboard will provide the pathways to share the information. Some components can run stable at higher speeds, which is referred to as overclocking. However, running these components at higher speeds requires more power and as a result generates more heat. Many higher-end motherboards offer better cooling solutions and have more robust power management and delivery, which will make it easier to achieve a stable overclock. Furthermore, modern CPUs and GPUs also auto-overclock based on the power and thermal headroom available. So using a higher end motherboard will likely allow those components to boost to higher frequencies longer. The chipset is the brain of the motherboard that relays information between the CPU and other onboard devices. While the CPU connects directly to RAM via its built-in memory controller and to a limited number of PCIe lanes, the chipset acts as the hub that controls the other buses on the motherboard. Additional PCIe lanes, storage devices, external ports like USB slots and other peripherals. Higher end chipsets can feature more PCIe slots and USB ports than standard models, as well as newer hardware configurations and different allocations of PCIe slots with more linked directly to the CPU. A good example of this is the difference between the X670 and B650 chipsets, with the X670 offering more PCIe lanes, better connectivity options and support for PCIe 5.0, whereas the B650 chipset offers fewer lanes and only supports PCIe 4. So will your motherboard choice impact performance? In general, no, it will not limit your performance, especially if you're running your CPU at stock conditions. If you install a high-end CPU, GPU and RAM in a cheap or expensive motherboard, they will perform roughly the same. If however you try to overclock or push your CPU beyond stock conditions, your motherboard selection might impact your performance. But even then it's unlikely, with both the X670 and B650 chipsets from the previous example supporting CPU overclocking. There are many reasons to spend more money on a motherboard, but additional performance in games shouldn't be one of them. I strongly recommend buying your motherboard based on on other factors such as PCIe lanes, connectivity, audio and aesthetics that fit your build. The other part of the question is what memory to choose. I covered this extensively in my recent what's the best memory for AMD AM5 Ryzen CPUs video, however I focused on memory speed and not the impact of CAS latency or capacity. Given that X3D chips are less reliant on RAM due to a larger L3 cache, I thought it would be helpful to show the impact of memory latency and capacity for a 9800X3D. The best way to do that is to run some benchmarks. So I tested three different DDR5 6000 kits in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is a game that is highly sensitive to RAM. As you can see from the results, at 1080p there is no meaningful difference between the three options, with the reduction in latency and increasing capacity offering only slight improvements. At 1440p there does appear to be a meaningful increase in the 1% low performance, with increases of around 4 and 6%, while at 4K these increases reduce to around 3%. So while it makes sense to try lowering your timing, since the small performance increase you gain is free, a DDR5 6064GB kit costs approximately twice as much as a 32GB kit. So buying a larger kit is not something I would recommend unless you really need the extra capacity for professional applications. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between the two top AMD gaming CPUs, with the newly released Ryzen 7 9800X3D in the red corner, taking on the current king of gaming chips, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D in the blue corner. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD AM5 open bench table with the following components. 
For the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB of DDR5-8000 at CL38. For the GPU, we have an ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4090 OC Edition. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For storage, we have 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, we have an ASUS ROG Thor 1200W Platinum 2 power supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the RTX 4090 at default clocks. I used a kit of DDR5 8000 CL38 Expo RAM, however I was able to successfully lower the timings to CL36 48 48 98. I also applied a number of performance enhancing tweaks which will be covered in greater detail later in the video. In order to thoroughly test the CPUs, I ran the benchmarks at different gain settings in addition to different resolutions. To place maximum load on each CPU, I tested at 1080p with low settings, which should allow me to extract maximum max performance from each chip. To create a more balanced CPU GPU load, I tested at 1440p with medium settings. And to see if each CPU had an impact on GPU performance, I tested at 4K with ultra settings. These resolution setting combinations align well with typical gamer selections, with 1440p medium settings reflecting what most online first person shooter gamers would likely use to achieve maximum frame rates, whereas 4K ultra settings reflect what most single player gamers would do with a high end CPU GPU combination to extract max quality. With the CPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy! In the blue corner, we have the champion! In the red corner, we have the challenger! Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out! As you can see from the benchmarks, the 9800X3D performed extremely well relative to the 7800X3D. So the question that I'm sure many of you are asking is, how do you unlock this performance? As with my previous Ryzen 9000 series videos, there are a few important BIOS tweaks that you will need to make in order to unlock the true potential of the 9800X3D. These tweaks are, one, turn Expo on, set TREF equal to 65, 535, and adjust memory sub timings. Two, undervolt with a negative all-core curve offset. Three, increase the PBO limits and set a platform thermal throttle limit. 
Four, increase the max CPU boost clock override. And five, set power plan to ultimate performance and turn memory integrity off. I applied the same tweaks to both CPUs. However, unlike the 9800X3D, the 7800X3D is locked for overclocking. So some of these tweaks, such as increasing the boost clock, have no impact on performance. For the 9800X3D, the impact of these tweaks is summarized in this table. I used Cinebench R24 as the benchmark, and I turned on each tweak individually so I could show its impact on performance starting with the smallest and ending in the largest. When implemented together, the boost in performance is over 8% while maintaining a CPU package temp of under 70 degrees Celsius, which is impressive. A couple of points to note. The largest increase in performance and decrease in latency came from using higher speed RAM, tightening the primary timings to CL36, and tweaking the memory sub timings. Unlike the other non-X3D 9000 series chips, such as the 9700X, undervolting did not result in a significant increase in performance, which was surprising. It did however reduce the power and temps, so that will obviously help with boost behavior. It's also important to emphasize that the performance boost that you are able to achieve will be heavily dependent on silicon quality. There is no guarantee that your 9800X3D will be stable with all of these tweaks enabled. A comprehensive step-by-step -step guide for how to implement all of these tweaks is contained in my recent How to Tweak an AMD AM5 Ryzen CPU step-by-step -step guide video, so there's no need to repeat it again here. I did however think it would be valuable to address three key issues that arose while testing and tuning the 9800X3D. The first issue I came across while testing was motherboard performance related. For my previous AM5 testing, I used a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master, which performed extremely well. For this video, I decided to build a new AM5 test platform around the newer X870E Aorus Master. I installed the latest BIOS version, F4G, and I started testing the 9800X3D. When I compared the benchmark results with my older data for the 7800X3D, I noticed that the 7800 was outperforming the 9800 in most games, which simply didn't make sense. So I installed the 9800X3D in my X670E board with the exact same BIOS settings I'd been using on the X870E board and the performance immediately increased. If you look at Total War Warhammer 3, this increase in performance was significant, especially the 1% lows at 1440p. This is repeated again when you look at Cyberpunk 2077, with an average performance increase at 1080p of around 10%. And when you look at Microsoft Flight Simulator, the performance increase in the 1% lows at 1080p and 1440p is a whopping 30%, which is crazy. To make sure it wasn't a bad motherboard, I tested a second X870E Aorus Master, but I got exactly the same results. I reached out to Gigabyte to let them know that they have a problem with this board, and they informed me that they were investigating. Hopefully they'll release a new BIOS to fix this soon, but in the meantime, I decided to conduct the testing for this video on my trusty X670E board. The second challenge I came across involved what memory to select for the 9800X3D. I showed the impact of memory speed on performance in my recent What's the Best Memory for AMD AM5 Ryzen CPUs video. However, that testing was conducted on a non-X3D CPU. Many of you rightly asked if performance scales the same way for the 9800X3D, so I thought it'd be helpful to run some additional benchmarks and find out. I tested a kit of DDR5 6000 against a kit of DDR5 8000 in five popular titles. Total War Warhammer 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and Black Myth Wukong. As you can see from the benchmark results for Total War Warhammer 3, there is a significant increase in 1% low FPS with the DDR5 8000 kit at all resolutions. This trend continues for Cyberpunk 2077 and Microsoft Flight Simulator with the 1% low showing a significant improvement with higher speed memory. However, for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and even more so for Black Myth Wukong, there is no meaningful benefit with higher speed memory. Both of these games tend to be GPU bound, especially Black Myth Wukong. So it appears that the memory needs for both titles stay within the larger L3 cache, which in turn prevents the CPU from needing to access RAM as frequently, thereby reducing the impact of higher RAM speeds on performance. The final issue I came across during testing was something called clock stretching. Clock stretching is a safety feature that is built into all AMD Ryzen CPUs and can occur when you are too aggressive with your undervolt. When the CPU thinks the actual voltage is too low to sustain a stable system at a given frequency, it will reduce the clock period until the voltage is back at an acceptable level. So when you undervolt your CPU, you may think it's okay but if you reduce the voltage too much, you will actually lose performance, even if your system appears to be stable. One way to check is to monitor your CPU clock speeds with a tool like HW Monitor or CapFrameX while your system is under heavy load. This is a snapshot of a stable 9800X3D system in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 with a negative 30 
all-core curve offset. The CPU max clock frequency is 5425 megahertz, which is what it should be for a CPU with a plus 200 megahertz max boost clock override. Whereas this is a different 9800X JD CPU with the exact same negative 30 all-core curve offset applied. As you can see, the CPU max clock is reading only 1250 megahertz, which is significantly lower than what it should be. That said, in the process of exploring this phenomenon, I discovered a quick and easy way to test if your undervolt is actually stable without having to monitor your clocks. You can simply run a system stability test in A to 64. When I did this for my unstable 9800X 3D, it failed within a few seconds of starting the test, even though it was able to run Cinebench and games without crashing. In this video, we pitted the two top AMD gaming CPUs against each other in a PC octagon to see who will emerge victorious. With the newly released Ryzen 7 9800X 3D in the red corner, taking on the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D in the blue corner. The round by round results show a decisive victory for the 9800X 3D, with 15 wins, no losses, and only two draws across 17 hard fought rounds. When you look at the performance across 16 games, you will see that the 9800X3D offers around a 10% increase in performance at 1080p, with significant improvements in 1% low performance at every resolution, which is something every PC gamer will notice. If we now look at professional workloads such as Blender, the 9800X3D dominates with advantages of over 30%. By significantly boosting the base clock frequency, AMD has managed to fix the Achilles heel of earlier X3D chips. You can now have class leading gaming performance without sacrificing performance in professional workloads. This increased performance does however come at a price, with the 7800X3D significantly more power efficient than the 9800X3D, continuing a trend seen with other Zen 5 chips when compared with their earlier Zen 4 cousins. But what happens when we look at cost? The 9800X3D is currently selling for $480, which is approximately $20 more than the 7800X3D at the time of filming this video. If you convert that into gaming value or FPS per dollar at 1080p, then the 9800X3D provides a knockout blow by offering around 5% better value when compared with the 7800X3D. If you're building a new system, I would, based on these results, strongly recommend buying the 9800X3D. It's a truly amazing chip that offers outstanding all-around performance and an equally great price. The challenge, of course, for new builders is finding one in stock. If, however, you currently own a 7800X3D, I don't think the increase in gaming performance, especially at higher resolutions, makes an upgrade worthwhile. For those of you that own a 7800X3D, my strong recommendation is to wait a generation before upgrading. The 7800X3D is still an amazing chip, even though AMD managed to improve upon it with the 9800X3D. For once, the day one reviews were right. The king is dead, long live the king. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. And if you'd like to support the channel further and gain access to some really great perks, please also consider joining our new membership program. Bye for now.